It's fantasy playoff time. We break down the Thursday night game, some big implications, big injuries. We talk about Keenan Allen and Devontae Adams and the quarterback situations. We get into the mailbag, answer your questions as you get ready for the fantasy playoffs, and we try to get you ready to win that championship. Do not miss a minute. Subscribe right now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right here, present, hoodieing it up. Oh, baby, it's hoodie season. Yeah, you've been full time hoodie. It's it's great. It's so cozy. Jason you know, Moore is here. I, I I like a good hoodie, but I need a zipper hoodie. I don't like the pullover. I get it because it's a commitment. It is a commitment to the day, and I'm wearing a non zippered hoodie today. Yeah, you're locked in. Yeah, but you know what? The problem is, I don't have. There's no oh no front pockets. Oh, there's no front pockets uh, on yeah. this hoodie either. I have one of those and and do you miss them? Every time I wear them, what? Who did this? Yes, yeah. who did this? Yeah, I'm I normally my, on Jason's I need my root side. pouch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah root you need pouch. your root pouch. Uh, Wednesday edition of the show. It is fantasy football playoff season. I was uh, taken aback by the level of comments on the YouTube channel yesterday of mm. people that. Like, I, you know, when you get to the playoffs, you see a lot of these comments coming through. It's like, yeah, I made the playoffs. I felt like 80% of the comments legitimately on YouTube were started 0-4, made the playoffs. Started 1-5, made the playoffs. I had somebody reach out on, on Twitter, and uh, they, they started 1-4, and four, and I, I told them, well, if you get to 7-7, seven and seven, you can probably get in. They got to seven and seven. They got into the playoffs. Like those nice. are the teams that go on to win the championships, oftentimes because they got hot at the right time. They're on the way up, and it, it doesn't matter once you make the playoffs. There's, you know, you need three wins. That's it. You you win the next three games, you're a champion. I have a question for you. Uh, do do either of you guys have any fantasy playoff superstitions that you've put into place? I mean, yesterday we were joking where, like, you bought. Brooks, you were very nice to Brooks. You bought him a pizza the week yeah. you guys played in the playoffs. Um, I remember many, many years ago, my strategy in the playoffs was I would change my team's logo to yeah, you did a player from my opposing yeah. team that I hoped had a bad game. Yeah, you tried. To, you did and that it worked. To Robert it worked, Griffin worked very well until I met Mike in the finals. <laughs> uh, do you have any like no, strategies I mean, I, I, for the playoffs other I, than playing the right players no i really think it's just being kind to your opponent making sure that they know how mm. special they are how valuable they are how much you are wish them the best you got to get that you got to get you know you got to get the the energy on your side i started a new one this year oh okay i have a new tradition that i'm going to be i'm going to be carrying it out every year okay uh because i am i'm in a very good mood this morning I'm pumped up. I got the playoffs coming. And part of that is because I drove in and I picked a playoff song. Oh, really? Yeah. I picked a playoff song that's going to pump me up. It, t it tells me the things I need to know going into the playoffs. Kind of like walkout music. Yeah. like the It's inspiring. Like I feel inspired mm. to win. And what was the song? Obviously, it was it was Michael Bolton. Okay. Obviously. Okay. And it, was, okay. it was Go it was the Jack Sparrow. Go the Distance. It was Go the Distance. It's a good song. Right? It's a great song. And if you listen to that song, it's yeah. pretty much talking about a fantasy football player heading into the playoffs. <laughs> you know or, what, Andy? Or Hercules. You know what, Andy? Either one. I believe you can go the distance. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm planning on it. Wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. You, no, no, no. You don't, you don't know what just Dude. happened. Yeah, what just happened? <laughs> Dude, Did I'm you curse you, me? I am telling you, you're a fantastic man. Thank you. <laughs> great. Great. Walked right into a curse. All right, we've got... Uh, We've got a lot going on. We got hungry for more on the show today. Some mailbag to get into. We'll talk about NFL news. We'll talk about the Thursday night game, which has some big injury implications. We'll remind you right here, right now. Drop it like it's hot. Your waiver wires have gone through, and you need to keep an eye on who's been dropped. There are people that are going to be forced to put some people onto waiver, uh, onto the waiver wire today, because you're living for today. 
And don't forget to continue looking at your opponent and what they need and uh, what is out there that they should be grabbing that they will not be able to because you block them. Yeah. And uh, there's a new Dynasty podcast out. So after you finish today's show, if you want to check that out, the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast, a keep trade cut episode, Kyle Borgononi, Matthew Betts, Jason Moore, and uh, some good discussions. It w there were some really good discussions, debatable player archetypes where it's like this guy, that guy, or the other, and, and uh, some really good conversation. This guy, that guy, or the other. How's that for a tease? You don't even know who we're talking about. Uh, before we jump into Hungry for More, uh, this is championship season, so we want to remind you about FantasyChamps.com. You need a trophy. You need a belt. You need a ring. You need the swag. I plan on getting it all this year. It Yeah, it's great. Presenting it all it's to Jason later on. But there is a promotion that they've been doing for us every year. You get a $59 championship ring for free if you buy a trophy or a belt. So maybe you're getting something for the league. It's a good deal. Like nice a trophy. trophy. Yep. And then you get something for yourself as a champion or for the winner, like an individual award. And you put the code in free ring. Mm -hmm. And you put the ring and the trophy in your cart. And you will watch the $60 ring become free. And also, those rings are awesome. They that are. is, every, every championship that I have over the last decade i have one of those rings from fantasy champs mike we've got them yep. all in front of where we work oh i dread when they arrive because yeah. i know you'll be displaying them right oh, next to me yeah. they're gorgeous so uh yeah free ring at uh, fantasychamps.com welcome to hungry for more presented by uber eats And I won't look back. Are you holding the lyrics? I can go the distance. Are you holding Wait, you the lyrics to the song? And I'll stay on track. No, I won't accept defeat. <laughs> what is happening? I'm right looking now? at. I'm him just holding in, I'm, a piece of. I have paper. the lyrics printed out. That's all. So you just, just for like, inspiration, like words of affirmation throughout yeah. the day. You're just going to pull them out and yeah. Read, during the show, I'm read gonna, a stanza. I'm or just going to read a stanza from Michael Bolton. This is a normal thing for the playoffs for your playoff song. I like you keep saying it's Michael Bolton. There's Michael Bolton did not write that song. There's no way. No, he sung it. Yeah, that's I'm giving him credit for okay. all of it. Wait, wait, wait. Are you Michael Bolton wrote plenty of music? Are you see. telling me Michael Bolton didn't write his own music? It's a Disney song. So I he, bet he didn't write much of his music. Uh, I think you think he wrong. wrote I, I I thought I loved you but I lied. It was Alan Menken. I yeah. mean, the, the dude yeah. writes everything. It's a <laughs> it, yeah. It's a Disney. Uh, it's a Disney song. There's also a rock version for the. I mean, it was a long drive in, so I had to go through oh. all the covers. Also, lyricist David Zippel. Okay. Don't want, don't want to leave him right. out. Oh well, yeah, good, good old. Good, no. I mean, Zip. they're, they're Zip. the one that they wrote the words. Michael Zip. Bolton's just just a voice. Like you only like me for my voice. Yeah, and the hair. Uh, all right, hungry for more. I'm not surprised that Mike's picked. Yeah, this baby. Week. I I went to put him in, and Mike had him first. Yeah, Drake London, Arthur. This is how we do it, my man. This is how we do it. <laughs> Drake London, 10 for 175. You feature your alpha number one wide receiver, and he is every part of it. He is a fantastic player. He's averaging two yards per route run. Uh, apparently, the Dino, I did not hear this discussion. We had London, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. That's mm -hmm. a fun one to go through. But Drake London is just it's been a frustrating season knowing, like just watching Drake London and knowing what he could be doing if he were in a different circumstance. They gave him this opportunity uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gets 175 yards. Monster game. So hopefully, and it wasn't, it wasn't just London. It was also Bijan, Kyle Pitts. Like the big three were finally the feature part. It wasn't just... Oh, well, we'll distract them with our really good players, and then we'll give our tertiary options the the ball. Keep doing this. I, was, I need I need more Drake London in my life. This was what you wanted to see. I said it could yes. be the coming out party. The problem has been not Drake London ever. The problem has been can the ball get close enough to the area where he could catch it with his hands? Because, I mean, you're literally coming off a game where he caught 20% of the targets. So that's the problem. Can Desmond Ritter continue to put the ball anywhere near his gigantic frame 
And, uh, you know, he caught 10 of 11 targets this last game. He has never had a game with that high of a catch percentage. He's been a 63% guy in his rookie season and this year before um, this past week. So, yeah, let's do it again. Yeah. Although they, um, although they lost, so they may go back to Algier and Patterson. <laughs> that would be a travesty as they did not lose because of the offense. They lost because of the defense. Yeah, that that's fair to, to note that, like – it wasn't their offense that lost them the game. They deserved to win based on what their offense did. But it's also fair to know, like, it's probably unrealistic to think that all the targets are going to be catchable. They haven't upgraded yeah, their quarterback. And so, you know, we, we see plenty of these middling quarterbacks whoa, have whoa. good games from time to time. Jason, get out of that toxic group thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right, yeah. Jason, who's your hungry for more candidate uh, this week? It's a week? player I loved coming into the season. Uh, started to get hot, on fire, got injured came back and has been running a ton it's Justin Fields and I am hungry for more Justin Fields since returning from his injury he's been running like crazy 18 for 104 rushing yards 12 rushing attempts for 59 12 for 58 and the Bears are winning they're winning ball games the team looks good uh, Justin Fields has looked better the involvement of DJ Moore has finally been making sense their defense has stepped up in his last six starts, Justin Fields, four of those six matchups have been a top 10 quarterback on the week. That's what we need. Three of those six have been a top three on the week. We're not talking about like, oh, that was good. That was a week winning type of performance. Now he plays the Cleveland Browns. Uh -huh. And this week that seems like not the matchup you want. But I want to highlight something. The Cleveland Browns through the first 11 weeks of this season, were the best defense in the league. And specifically against quarterbacks, they were the number one hardest defense. But they have dealt with injuries. Ward has been out. Uh, Miles Garrett has been playing but clearly banged up. He he is not the, the game wrecker he was for the first 10, 11 weeks of the season. The last three weeks, every single week, they have given up more to the quarterback than that quarterback's average. They are, instead of the first, as in the best, you know, defense against quarterbacks for fantasy, they are, in the last three weeks, the 24th. They they aren't quite as strong, and with Flacco in tow, you know, he's he's had a lot of good coming for fantasy. You know, you, you could trust uh, Amari Cooper, you could trust uh, David Njoku a little bit more, but he also has had a, a, just a few, like, what was that pick? And that sets up the other team's offense to score. So I am hungry for more Justin Fields. I want him to run. I want him to succeed. I want him to help people win fantasy championships this year in the playoffs. This week will be a big test going into Cleveland. Um, Denzel Ward didn't play last week, could be back this week. And if the, he gets it done this week, that'll be the proving grounds for the Arizona-Atlanta yeah. explosions. And um, as someone who may end up facing Justin Fields next week, not looking forward to that. Don't want to do that. Um, he's also been protecting the football a little bit better. No interceptions for three consecutive games. Only one interception in the last five. He did fumble a little bit. But last week, no turnovers. Uh, he only has two multi-touchdown games throwing the football out of nine, and he's still putting up those numbers. So th that that's kind of a nice place to be when you're quarterback. Those if he throws are four apiece, though. I know. If you throw a <laughs> second touchdown, though, like Justin Fields throwing a second touchdown automatically puts him into the top five every week. Yeah, because that's he's, a strange of his thing. It's a strange thing when you can just throw two and then you're like the best quarterback on the week and they've won three or four games. So I like that one. I just realized. So you, Andy. You're thinking about the Bolton song? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I am. And this is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. Okay. Um, no, I was talking nice. about the odds, you know. Any given Sunday, anything can happen. But the odds are right now that next week you will play Papa Josh in round two of the playoffs. And you will have to face Justin Fields, who you basically orchestrated getting to his team against the Cardinals. Right. Oh, man, that's going to be must-watch TV. Uh, continue, Andy. Who's your hungry for more? It's a, it's a two-pack. Oh, you're starving. David Njoku and Amari Cooper. Uh, Joe Flacco, 44 and 45 pass attempts, last two starts. Did either of you guys see his post-game interview? 
I, I did not. not. It was no. somewhat. It was pretty endearing because it was, uh, you know, this was a, a guy who was watching football like three weeks ago, and he's he's just kind of in a YOLO zone of like, I feel like I'm ten years old again, getting to do this. Like he knows how valuable it is to get to play in the NFL. That had to have been brutal for someone like Joe Flacco, watching what has happened this year at with, quarterback with all the backups being awful. And he's like, I'm guys, I can do this better than you. I mean, not, I mean, we all, you know, yeah, we say that type of stuff. Male Americans. Like Cam Newton says that all the time. Yeah. No. And, and he cannot, but, (laughs) but Joe Flacco can. Well, and, and, and he had a very good game. This is the first time last week, David Njoku, two touchdowns. First time in his career, he's had two in a game. Second highest yardage total of his career with Joe Flacco. Amari Cooper. Season high, 14 targets, 7 for 77. Would have been dealt in a, a better game if he hadn't fumbled. Chicago, Houston, the next two weeks. These two players, I think, can be key cogs in a fantasy football championship run if you were so lucky to have them on your roster. And um, I'm hungry for more. I can go the distance. <laughs> you can, Man, believe in yourself because yeah. you are good enough, Andy. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. A defense? No. Uh, deodorant? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you can order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. Um, fine, Eckler finally put some deodorant on last week. Yeah. It smelled a Not lot. Not stinky. Smelled a lot better. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I'm sure we've all done it, the uh, left home without the deodorant on mistake. Oh, yeah. We've been there. Of course. How long, do, what's the average time to remember it, do you think? Like moments from, like you leave the house, you forgot. It's either. How long does it take? It's either five minutes, like right away, or it's a problem. Because then. I'm it's rem- either a smell or I, a yeah, feeling? It's, it's either I remember, and that's right away, or I am reminded, <laughs> and that's yeah. a problem. Yes. That's like, oh, wait. Oh no, that's right. And what do you do, what do you do in that situation? That do point. you hit the Walmart? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta. Make Mike a lets pit it stop. ride. You gotta he, let it ride. Mike's man. got the look of a. He, disgusting. Yeah, I mean, he's got like two or three shirts on. He's, that's yeah, true. He's I've got a barrier. That dude, hoodie season, man. You just throw on another layer. I like. I am not sweat I, more. I, I am not opposed to you know a, a run to the bathroom a couple times. You got to soap and water it up. Oh, a full cleaning. Yeah. Hmm. Look, desperate times. Yeah, yeah. All right, news and notes. Uh, the the Vikings have named Nick Mullins their starting quarterback against the Bengals. Makes sense. Jason it, it, said he, he was pretty much sure of that yesterday. It was their plan from the moment that, you know, Kirk Cousins got injured. Dobbs was brought in to be a backup while Mullins was recovering from his injury. Um, it just so happened Dobbs was thrust into – he won that one game. Yeah, he, he he was thrust into a game he wasn't supposed to play. Won, won the hearts of the Vikings and was given more opportunity than he really deserved. He, he is the, and I hate to say this, but he's the like, um, the drunk guy at the bar who thinks the girl's real pretty, and then the next day, oh no, he realizes he did not go home with the girl he thought he went home with. Yeah, that's what we thought of Dobbs. That's what happens every time, guys. That people see Dobbs the first time. Pittsburgh, yeah. Tennessee, Arizona, Minnesota. Like, ah, this guy's pretty good. And then you wake what up the next morning and you're like, who yeah. is this? He's not. Alexander Madison, non-participant on Tuesday's walkthrough. I assume we're all in a very doubtful state about Alexander Madison. That's where I am. Currently very doubtful. Expecting him to miss, but we'll be monitoring it till Sunday. And Jefferson will be monitoring that as well. Or you, Saturday. I mean, you, you talk about a real gamble. Justin Jefferson last week. You know, he he basically was the equivalent of the week you played H N off of injury. Yeah, got nothing. You had waited forever for him. Now you have a new quarterback mm-hmm. in Nick Mullins. I think it's better. Yeah, it is definitely better. Mullins is an upgrade over Dobbs for the passing game. Mullins is not as good as Dobbs if you're playing that player as a quarterback because Dobbs has that rushing floor. Um, but this is an upgrade. And if Justin Jefferson is active, I am one hundred percent still starting him. J, uh, Jamar Chase, non-participant, ankle injury, monitor that. Tyreek Hill, day-to-day. You know, Tyreek Hill's not a guarantee to play, but I think he'll be playing. 
So we'll see what happens there. And um, we got a report this morning, a couple of reports this morning. Nico Collins feeling better, making progress. Stroud still in concussion protocol. Houston, a complete unknown right now. Don't know the quarterback, don't know the wide receiver group. I think that's the best way to say it. You just, Houston is a, a, a question mark. Like they, they should be, you know, I don't even know if the line is active for that team, but I don't know how you would. You're just making a bet on injuries you don't know about right now. And then uh, Shane Sykin did mention yesterday that Jonathan Taylor will play again this season. Well, it's the well he said that's the, the plan. plan. So we'll see if that is your fantasy season. Yeah, I'm, I mean, pe people make plans. This is a team that plans is change. Playoff, bound, playoff contending. Like They are fighting to win ball games. They did not put him on the IR. He has already missed two weeks. So, in theory, they believed that this injury would not be a four-week injury. They want him back. This would be the third week. I don't imagine he plays this week, but it's realistic that he could be back for next week in the playoffs. That's against Atlanta and the following week against the Raiders. Uh, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a quick break and come back with the Thursday night preview. Uh, apparently, Jason, all those thoughts you had on Jonathan Taylor coming coming back um, made Papa Josh very excited. Uh, that's that's great. Um, I <laughs> I I, I look great. to make everyone excited through the well, playoffs. I believe that everyone out there can be a winner. Josh and not everyone. Yeah, I mean it's well, not me. everyone will win, but everyone can win. Well, not everyone. If you made the playoffs, that's all I'm saying. I'm yeah. not, I mean, if you didn't make it, I mean, half half of the people every week are not winning. Mike, did we make the playoffs? You're darn right. You're darn right, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, Andy. Champ, champ, champ. Uh, yeah, the most important league. Yeah, darn right. All right, let's jump in. Thursday night breakdown. All right, the um. Falling down the hill, Los Angeles Chargers at five and eight take on the Stay Strong Little Roots. <laughs> take on the <laughs> falling down the hill, Las Vegas Raiders at five and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Las Vegas minus three. This is the part that is so sad. The over under is thirty four, and that is not a number you would have ever seen for a matchup between these two teams with those weapons. If they had quarterbacks, they had quarterbacks, and they had running backs, and they had wide receivers. I mean. Josh Jacobs, certainly in question. Kyle, I don't know if you can look up and see what the line was, the over-under, um, before the Jacobs injury. I'd be curious if that was accounted for at all. But, you know, the Chargers have lost four of five. The Raiders have lost three in a row. Neither team is hitting the overs. Uh, the Raiders are home favorites in this one. The hockey sticks at quarterback for Los Angeles, Easton Stick. And it's Aiden O'Connell who had a zero-point game they're 30th in points per game since he took over. 31st in points per uh, plays per game. Yeah, this is this is a this is a a barf fest for fantasy. The Raiders' defense has been legitimately pretty good. The Chargers' defense has been legitimately pretty good, and that is awful when you consider how bad both offenses are. And now losing Justin Herbert, I think these teams are going to have a hard time scoring. The line at 34 is very low, but I could easily see them not getting to that low line. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'd be curious the Max Crosby status right now because I think that that was up in the air. That obviously is the Raiders' defense in a lot of respects, but, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, Aiden O'Connell and Easton Stick is not the matchup you were hoping for on Thursday night football, and, you know, these are two teams in the top ten of the NFL draft right now. And even worse, is Keenan Allen playing? He yeah. Was, I mean, he did not practice. Was he a full did not practice on Tuesday? Because he missed Correct. Him. He was, or or whatever it is right now, because it's the early game, so listed as that. And if you recall, there was the very famous mm. playoff Keenan Allen. Was that in the playoffs? Oh, yeah. The fantasy playoffs? Oh, yeah. Oh, Mike would remember. Also yeah. burned into Mike's memory forever. Yeah, because Keenan Allen shouted. To, it was to me. He did. He, yeah. he looked right in the camera, into my eyes. We had a moment, and he shouted with full confidence, don't 
sit me because he was coming off an injury. Did you know it was this exact and week with this exact matchup? Yeah. All right, that part really? I did. Yes. Same week, same team in Las yeah. Vegas. And you know who didn't sit Keenan Allen that week? This guy. Because he it, said, don't sit me. Yeah. If you don't remember the he story or you're thinking Mike is making some hyperbolic <laughs> statement by saying that he looked right into Mike's eyes, he di Keenan did look at the camera pregame and say, don't sit me. He yeah. was telling people, don't sit him. And then he goosed. And well, not only goosed. He, he, no, no, like, no, 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 no. He, I think One he, for 17, Yeah, he had Jason. a catch. But what, did he, like. And then left the game. I was going to say he didn't play much that game, right? There was something that was, it was, like, outlandishly bad. He was just a decoy. Some some have considered his comments. Maybe he meant it, like, don't oh, sit me. Yeah. He's just, he like, has a don't. problem. He has a problem articulating punctuation. And, yeah, punctuation is an issue for Keenan Allen. <laughs> um. So, so look, like Christopher Walken situation. <laughs> don't sit me. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, man. Wait, what, what do I do? What are you saying? I've said what I need to say. Well, uh, look, the fact that it's lining up that way again, and and let's be <laughs> let's be honest, Keenan Allen's a top five fantasy producer. He has a different quarterback. He'll be completely needed in this game if he's active. Oh my gosh! All right, let, let me tell you this: push comes to shove here. We need to look at some names. And, yeah, we yeah. do. And and by the way, I, for those in need of roster spots, I'll tell you what I did because I don't know if it's prescriptive or not. If you guys would have done the same, I I after paying for Joshua Palmer last week with Fab, I jettisoned him into space uh, yesterday mm -hmm. uh, because I will never. I realized I will never have the confidence to play Joshua Palmer if he comes out and has a good game. I will not have the confidence to play Joshua Palmer. Oh, move, for sure. moving forward so i just i took that like question out of my head for future weeks that's, yeah it's not too bad okay so here are the questions would you sit pass <laughs> would you sit keenan allen i'm gonna start would you sit keenan allen if you could pivot to Devonte smith against seattle yeah yes okay now you're making it easy first yes i'm yeah, starting nice. easy uh, Cortland Sutton in a plus matchup against Detroit in Detroit. Cortland Sutton. What if Keenan's a full practice today? I don't have that information, so I'm answering. All right, like so I've you're never right. Yeah, 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 Sutton, Sutton, Sutton. Okay, Duh. let's go down a little bit further. A player who's been hot, his uh, opportunities are up because of injuries around him. The matchup is perfect, but this is a guy who's been a questionable start every week. Mm. Would you be willing mm. – to bench Keenan Allen for Jaden Reed, rookie wide receiver for the Packers. Against they are against Tampa Bay, and one of the best matchups for wide receivers. And you, you won't probably won't know Christian Watson's full status by then. I would be, yeah. I mean, yeah, true. I'd be benching him. Him, which is <laughs> what is his name <laughs> that you are benching? Him, I, uh, you know, the guy I, we're talking about, the dude. I, I don't. This is not a fair game. I, I want no. to know the status report of Allen. Kyle, in all those situations, who are you playing? I'm playing Keenan Allen, and I'll probably die. Yeah. Okay, there you Kyle's go. not the right person to ask, though, because no, Kyle, I know. I know. what it's... does the tattoo say across your chest? Keenan Allen. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just says Keenan Allen. That's exactly Keenan that's Allen. all it says, <laughs> Keenan Allen. He takes his shirt off, and people are like, oh, you're, are you it's Keenan his lower, Allen? It's his lower back. Right? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, it's all over. Oh, oh, Front, no. back, legs. Behind the ear, little right, tiny. Right cheek. Yeah. Um, by the way, there's a report that just came out this morning uh, on the other side. I mean, you're looking at Devontae Adams. He's had a, It's been a struggle. Like, you always play Devontae Adams, but it has been a single-digit struggle very often. The Athletic is reporting right now, and this comes from uh, Beat Rider in Las Vegas, Victor Four. Very likely, Aiden O'Connell gets benched for Garoppolo if he plays poorly in Week 15. Okay, I was going to ask, what is what happened? I mean, I know Gar Garoppolo wasn't playing great or anything and then you had all the coaching fiasco but was there I couldn't recall the contract status was this they're trying not to get Garoppolo hurt so they don't owe him a bunch of money yeah there's money implications if he okay. plays and gets hurt which he loves doing he, yeah he does okay so that makes sense to bench him if you know he's not the future but Aiden O'Connell's been he's been terrible. terrible he's been terrible and and you know it's much better for Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers if Jimmy G is in there well, it's just it's it's that's such a tough situation because it's so unfair to the defense to be the your your offense is inept you have to carry us and they I mean they they're doing their best like they held Minnesota to zero if, points with two minutes left and they couldn't win the game all right if Jimmy G gets hurt 
they're on the hook for eleven point two five million to Jimmy G. If you're Jimmy G and you get the start, oh, I'm. Are I'm, you sliding? My groin. You're not sliding, right? I'm, no, head first into everything. Well, yeah, they, they I'm, have I'm to... currently calling doctors to say, what can you not verify <laughs> with X-ray or MRI that would be a legitimate <laughs> injury? That's what I'm doing. I'm going out there and whatever that is, like if it's my spleen or if it, whatever, I know. What can't you see with the cameras? <laughs> yes. How can I not be proven to not be injured? You guys are playing Devontae Adams, right? Yeah. Would you play him over Keenan Allen if Allen's active? I would play him over Keenan Allen simply because this is not the first time that he's really in that situation. It he's is a new injury. Here. It's a new injury. Yeah. It's it would, not one he's been reporting this year. If Keenan is hurt and has Easton stick. This conversation's this is I'm sad. worried about this conversation because we it, it's Wednesday. We don't have today's practice report. We don't have tomorrow's situation. Well, they play right. tomorrow. All right, I, well, I guess I'm worried on. about the conversation just because I don't want to like. Right, this is not the people, end of the story, okay? We need to make this sure is the middle chapter. We need to make sure in tomorrow's news we have the updated practice report with today, and we we talk yeah. again about what you would do because I do think in this matchup, if you're looking at what is probable for Easton Stick, I would think that you're looking at around 200 passing yards, like kind of almost as the the cap. I know he threw for like 150 in the second half last week. Yeah, he's 13 for 24 for 179 last week. Um, and so not that good. Two fumbles. Uh, but I, I think that you know one touchdown and 200 yards is kind of like, I, I think the Chargers would be like, you did pretty good out there. And if you're dividing that, you know, you're you're still going to have Quentin Johnston, who was the more benefactor of Easton Stick last week. You're going to have um, Austin Eckler out of the backfield, some yeah, tight, tight ends. ends. Yeah. Oh, well. It just seems like there is not going to be a whole lot here to go around for Keenan. He's also the best friend of quarterbacks, though. And it's great. I look forward to Jason telling me if he's going to play Keenan Allen tomorrow. Yeah, okay. tomorrow. Let's let's, let's spin that. that for tomorrow. Because uh, I mean, listen to some inspiring songs coming I in and make a answering. decision. <laughs> okay. It's up to Jason. All right, I will answer. Um, you interested in either tight end in this game? Is, no. Uh, I would have said Everett if if it was uh, a different quarterback. But I don't have confidence yeah, in that. No. Nope. I don't want to start my week on that note. Yeah, yeah, this this does not seem like you know how a couple weeks ago you got to start I guess a couple weeks in a row, you got to start with the uh C D Lamb Thursday night. Yeah, my sweetie. I, I think most people who are playing guys in this game are gonna start off where the end of the week they're gonna be like, I gotta throw Gabe Davis in because I need I need upside. Yeah, I I have Devontae Adams in my big matchup and I'm just praying that Look, if, if you're Aiden O'Connell, just throw it to him every play. He'll be happy. He'll be one less people, ma one less person <laughs> mad at you on the sideline. <laughs> All right, anybody else from this game you want to talk about? Eckler. Let's talk about Eckler for a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, Eckler and Zamir, just in case. Eckler. Because if Josh, look, if Josh Jacobs plays, I'm going to play him. 100%. So if Josh Jacobs is out. Zamir Z White slides into the. You know, does he make it to RB two? No, no, he's Antonio okay. Gibson RB three territory. All right, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely, and I would rather play Antonio Gibson if if I could over Zamir White. Um, and the same goes for Abdullah. Abdullah same to category. me would be even lower than Zamir White because the touchdown opportunity is probably Zamir's. He's a P Ryan category. Yeah, and then uh, Eckler last week bounced back a little bit. They're going to be dependent on him. Uh, the the opportunities for Joshua Kelly and, and Isaiah Spiller were not there, and they weren't good. So Eckler is is a start, and you pray on Thursday? Yep. You have to start him. I mean, his opportunities, even when he was sucking. Um, Kenneth Walker or Austin Eckler? Two players ooh. with question marks. Walker versus uh, Philly. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go Eckler there. I would, I would go Eckler there. Eckler's He's still got a lot the, to prove rest of the season. The last three weeks, 16 opportunities, 17 opportunities, 17 opportunities. Last week he looked pretty good. He was, you know, over five a clip. I, I gave that little anecdote about the play I saw where I was like, oh, That's not him. Who was that? That wasn't Eckler. I was like, oh, no, it was. He, he had burst, and, you know, Mike's talked about he's been coming back from this high ankle sprain, which sometimes could take, you know, months. Yeah. All right. Um, nobody else from this matchup? You want to get into the mailbag? Let's go. Bag. Bag. All right, if you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click on the Submit a Question button. 
Dial the voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. Mike, are you shaking your head over there? Yeah, you're just you're posting pictures of your playlist. Well, I, I noticed that I had a paused song in the corner of my laptop. Uh, yeah. yeah. What was the song? It was uh, it was superstar lyricist uh, Michael Bolton. Uh, now one of I his, need to know did, did one Michael of his Bolton hits? write? What, did any you want music? the lyrics, Mike? Here, here. No, I, here you go. Starts, here you uh, go, what? Mike. I have often dreamed, right? Yeah. Of no, a, you could probably yeah. sing it. Of a far off place. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Where a hero's welcome will we'll be, be waiting, waiting for me. me. Yeah. 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 This is fantasy football. Oh, it's a great football. team. It's fantasy football. Uh, let's jump into a mailbag question. <laughs> hey, footballers. This is Jason from New Hampshire. Just a quick question heading into the fantasy playoffs. I was able to grab Trey McBride and David Nidoku. Who would you guys be riding for the fantasy playoffs? Uh, thank you very much, and I love watching you guys. Keep up the great work. Oh man, this this is actually uh, this is a pretty tough question for this yeah. week. Mm-hmm. Trey McBride gets the 49ers. David Njoku gets the Chicago Bears. San Francisco is the second best defense against t- tight ends in the league. Njoku coming off a big game, but you don't want to just chase a career high in touchdowns, right? And you also have a matchup where, like, Cleveland on paper could be out ahead in that game. They could, you know, Jason was talking about Justin Fields. Maybe if Justin Fields gets it going against the Cleveland defense, they're throwing the football like they were last week. That would be the hope. That's the hope, for sure. But, you know, I feel like McBride is a target guarantee. Like, I, I would bet the targets are higher for McBride than Njoku if I was betting targets. But that's a really tough decision. Oh, it is really I tough. I mean, eight for the last two games these two played. I mean, eight for eighty nine for McBride with a touchdown before the bye week. There was some uh, more buzz this morning interviewing offensive coordinator for the Cardinals, talking about Trey McBride was ready for the opportunity. Sky's the limit. You know, elite tight end was thrown around. It's tough because this is the one position where I really do usually focus on. Yeah, you do match up uh, a, a lot more. Najoku's matchup is against uh, the 17th ranked tight end defense. Yeah, I mean, if if you really look on a game by game basis, right, uh, at what the San Francisco 49ers have given up, the the second half of the year has been worse for them at guarding tight ends, which is good. That's where we are. I mean, coming off this last week, you saw um, a, a lot more points than average from the Seattle tight ends being scored um, than you usually see. Uh, out of them so they 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 actually gave up quite a bit uh, a couple weeks earlier they gave the average to Seattle the week before that to Tampa Bay they gave up more than their average so we should say the answer at the okay. same time and see if we have the same name okay I think that's fair there's a there's a tough question but I do have my answer do you have Mike, yours, Mike? Do you have an answer there I do yeah all right go last names here last names last okay. names all right. all right three two one McBride Nijoku. yeah I thought I saw that coming so we were Mike and I were McBride. You were yeah. no joke, but it's very close. And I would f- here's the truth: I'd feel great about both players mm-hmm. uh, at this stage in the season. They're both above Kincaid. They're both above above Goddard. They're both above Ferguson, in my opinion. They're both uh, very good plays this week. Yeah, and uh, we brought it up before, but just hang on to David yeah. Njoku. He's got the best tight yeah. end schedule of any tight end the rest of the season. Hopefully, they're both just great. Yeah, hopefully this is a oh man. I got twenty one points instead of twenty. That's been happening a lot lately. Like we we, yeah. we benched uh, Flowers, and we thought, oh no, we made a huge mistake because we put in Jaden Reed over him, and it was like, ah, he scored. Six. It was a mistake of point one. Yeah, those are the best mistakes. <laughs> mistakes that aren't mistakes yeah. at all. All right, um, there is a follow up question from YouTube on T McB. Isaiah Likely or T McB? And that's a Trey McBride easy, yeah, I'll, easy for I'll me. I'll go McBride. Uh, let's jump into another voicemail. Hey, ballers. Tyler from Dallas. Uh, quick question for you. Trying to decide who to start between Kyler Murray and Trevor Lawrence. Appreciate it. Yikes. So Kyler Murray against San Fran. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence is um, Baltimore. He's in a rough matchup. Baltimore is the second-best team against quarterbacks. Trevor Tell that La- to Matthew Stafford <laughs> last week in the rain. No, I know. I know. I uh I think that for me, I'm gonna. For me, I'm gonna go Kyler. I think he's the mobility. It gives me a higher baseline from disaster. I would agree, given the current ankle issue that Trevor Lawrence is playing through, the theoretical very good defense that Baltimore usually is, 
and this is a very important game. I mean, those, these two teams are playing for that like number one seed. Um, I will go with Kyler's rushing ability and hope that if he gets you know fifty or sixty yards on the ground, that it comes with a rushing touchdown and have that baseline. I, I'm not really thrilled with either option this week. Yeah, going. I'll go Kyler as well. Week eleven against Houston. The team only put up 16 points, and yet Kyler was the QB6. The next week, they only put up 14 points. He was the QB9. And then in a weird one against Pittsburgh, they put up 24 points, but he was the QB17 because that was the James, James Conner. Connor, James Conner was back. I the, mean, uh, uh, James Conner is still a playable uh, fantasy running back because of the volume, but San Francisco, I would bet more on the Kyler side. Last week was the most yards and points given up by Baltimore all year long, and it was at home, and it was against Los Angeles. In bad weather. Maybe that was the reason. Yeah, it's the weather. The defenders yeah. were slipping around. The weather seemed just fine. It, was, it wasn't as bad. I mean, as both bad. quarterbacks threw for a billion yards and played well. It yeah. wasn't as bad as, as earlier uh, worries about wind, but it was just rain. And rain does not really affect passing that much if it's not windy. Yeah, it kind of seemed like this, like a dome game or something. I mean, it was just the exact yeah, same almost. Out, output. I don't know. Just dome, more exciting. Dome games for the last week were like three to nothing. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, have you flipped? Never. Yeah, I know you want no, to abandon no, that because uh, quarterbacks yeah, still sh- also matter. You know, sleeper, show me the teams that were in the domes. Sleeper has the little icon that is next to the matchup that shows like it, the blowing shows wind a dome right or a blowing wind yeah. or like the sun. I see that little dome symbol. It just mm, it feels so yeah. good. Yeah. For yeah. fantasy. Yes. Yeah. It's and dope. for like getting like pneumonia. It also protects <laughs> individuals from pneumonia. So but, if I if I flip my argument to health based, can I get people on board? Yeah. If you give me the stats, pneumonia per capita in uh open dome right, cities. I'm on it. Which Kyle stop it. Stop looking it up, Kyle. He already has because he's already got it pulling up. Uh, Kyle's kind of like a fantasy AI that we have access to. Mm-hmm. We can just ask a question. and Yeah, even when you don't want the answer, yeah, you're going to get it. He'll give you the stats for every Mighty Ducks starting lineup player. I don't know. He's like Minority Report over there. He's got all the screens. Uh, let's move on here. It's a trust your studs test. <sighs> We're going into it, okay? You want to play this game? No, I don't. It's too bad. You have to. <laughs> All right, this question comes in from Twitter, Mark West, which... Wait. Oh, yeah. The? <laughs> the Mark West that no one listening 1992 knows. 1992 center for the Phoenix Suns, Mark West. Wow. <laughs> Old Dominion alumni? Wow. Thanks for listening and supporting the show. We really appreciate it, Mark. Oh, man. Uh, well, he would like to know. He's a big fantasy guy, a uh, big guy in general. But uh, after the last four weeks, PPR question, Stefan Diggs, Rashi Rice. Uh, full PPR, I'm still going to go Diggs. I completely understand uh, Rushy Rice has been more and more involved, more active, getting touchdowns, but I don't expect it. Better. A, yeah, sure, better. No, uh, I'm, I'm with you. That's why I made the joke. The targets are there for Diggs. You are expect they? a high. Yeah, yeah, I mean, last 11, week he still had. Two How is he weeks? doing such little with so much? Not Well, two weeks ago, or I said two games ago against Philly, he was the wide receiver 13. Yeah, yeah. He, he was yeah, okay. He scored. Yeah, Last week, 74. very nice. difficult matchup against the Kansas okay. City Chiefs. Uh, there's a high over-under in this game against Dallas. Um, yeah, I'm still going digs. Yeah. It was pointed out to me yesterday by Mike that, like, I turned down your your trade after you turned down my trade. Like, right. you could have sent Same me Ack- trade, but- mm-hmm. Could have sent me Ackler. would have changed your season and everything. Um, and then Mike pointed out, like, I didn't – he was shopping Stephon Diggs. Right. And I just, something in me just didn't, like everyone thought I was going to get him. I had all the picks to get him, and I didn't do it. And so far, yeah, you know how bad that would feel if I was rolling Eckler digs right now yeah, with yeah. no draft month, picks? You would be not in the playoffs. Yeah you, yeah, you would probably be not in the playoffs if you made those two trades. Crazy. Uh, All right, Dave wants to know, he just picked up Matthew Stafford off waivers. Do I play him over Mahomes? Oh, my gosh. I am. I am in a league the listener league i'm trying to earn everybody out there an extra spot to be had i am actively paying fab to pick up matthew stafford i am playing him over mahomes on my team yep and i i would do the same thing it's very tough pill to swallow when you look at the names you you know that patrick mahomes is awesome but the matchup is incredible it doesn't get much better 
than you know I talked about it on the on the stream of the week yesterday for Matthew Stafford. Um, but you just look at the last three weeks. Matthew Stafford is the quarterback three in fantasy. Only Dak Prescott and surprisingly Trevor Lawrence have scored more than Matthew Stafford. And then you add in the matchup, yeah, um, where Patrick Mahomes low over under against New England. Patrick Mahomes over that same time period has been the quarterback eight, the quarterback sixteen, the quarterback twenty, while Stafford has been the quarterback seven, eight, and five. So he's been playing better, and he's got the better matchup. I'm I'm rolling Stafford. Yeah, would they, you play Geno Smith over Patrick Mahomes? That would be hard because have, Geno's coming off the injury. injury concern. But he plays Philly. Oh, I, I'm saying the 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 chance of re-aggravating the groin injury is like the thought of that is so devastating. So I probably go Mahomes there. But Staff, Stafford, at this point, it you aren't you're not finding a waiver wire piece of garbage that you're throwing into your lineup because, oh, the matchup is so great. No, it's – I mean, Cooper Cup looks like he is – he's ready to perform again. Puka's playing fantastic. Everything is lined up so that you just – you need to adjust how you're looking at Matthew Stafford right now is – Quickly. Is, is what I – yeah, the point I want to make, it's not just the matchup. It's Stafford and the Rams – are moving forward are in a really good spot. The touchdowns are hitting for Stafford right now and the matchup against the Manders. I believe the Manders have given up the most top 12 uh, fantasy quarterbacks by far. Yeah, that, it's a smash matchup. Yeah. And that's hopefully you blocked somebody you're playing from yeah. playing Stafford. Uh, let's close out with this classic annual debate question from Instagram. Tony wants to know, should you continue? To uh, add oh drop God. players mm. once your team is eliminated from the playoffs. I, I am in a expert league right now that got put into playoffs. The notice went out with the bracket, and it said, remember, only playoff teams can right. add and drop players on the waiver day. So I don't mind at all if a league wants to institute that. If a league wants to say, look, we want our playoff teams to – Put their best foot forward, right. not be blocked by people who are playing for nothing. Um, I, I don't mind that at all. But I prefer leagues where you are playing for something. There's a consolation bracket. There's a weekly a, prize. A weekly prize. There's a toilet to avoid there's, wearing around your neck. There's okay. still the possibility of trying to find a keeper. Right, yeah, if you're in a keeper league, obviously dynasty or whatever. Um, so the majority of leagues, I I think I have a different opinion now. Yeah, I so the majority of leagues for me, I prefer active players, uh, not just like grabbing a guy to, to cause mayhem entirely, but I think if you're playing actively, it shouldn't be limited to just the playoffs. If you want it limited to just the playoffs, then your league just needs to institute that as a rule. I think my opinion, unless you're in a keeper league, is now on the side of non-playoff teams should not be able to add. Because the purpose – here's the reason why. And we had a discussion this morning in the studio about, you know, people that have gone out, commissioners in particular, and made jokes in the, in the you know – Quote, unquote, jokes. Yeah, quote, unquote, jokes. Wouldn't it be funny if everybody signed a quarterback and this player can't sign one? Don't do that. Don't well, do that. listen, one of the things that happens, if you're a non-playoff team and you are participating in the waivers without any purpose, there isn't – I'm saying if there right. isn't external reasons, a weekly prize, a keeper – a playoff position, something in play. If it's totally arbitrary to do it, somebody loses on the other end of that signing, right? There's a winner and a loser. Somebody else is going to look at it with the eyeball to collusion. I mean, at some point in time, you're like, that guy picked this player up. That affects me negatively. My opponent gets a benefit. Is that player working with my opponent? Yeah, if there if there is no purpose to you playing, if it's not – changing the outcome of draft picks or punishments or keepers or anything, um, then you can argue then the only thing you're doing is trying to... Um, you're disrupting somebody. Yeah. Not uh, like one matchup. You're disrupting one person in a matchup. And I've never been on that side until really today in this discussion. Are you still firmly on the other side, Mike? Yeah. If the, well, I was. He's on the watch if, the world burn. If yeah. there is, if there's a rule in place before the season starts, fine. I will abide by the rule. But there is no gentleman's clause for me. Of, well, you can't do this. Why? Because you're just not supposed to. Because I don't really like it if you do that. Well, get out of my way. 
I'm going to mm. do what I want. Well, that's not surprising. One more question uh, because it's it's a good one. Uh, it's a marriage question, which is we're experts, okay. obviously. YouTube question from Billy. How do I win when I play my wife in week one of the fantasy playoffs? Seems like a real lose-lose to me. I think it's a win-win. You win, and then you you just make sure she don't forget it. Yeah. You know, you just. That's right, a, that's right a, guys. Look, no, I don't. I'm, look, if you have a, if you have a, that seems like a lose. If you're in a marriage and you have a strong relationship, this is. This what if shit. you have like a kind of a mediocre relationship? Like, if you're on the verge of ending things, then maybe you shouldn't be playing fantasy <laughs> football together. You should be doing cooperative <laughs> things, so not she, competitive. If things. she wins and you lose, you lose. If you win and she loses, you win. At fantasy, yeah, yeah. which is all that matters right now. Yeah, I mean, whoever whoever loses, they'll get over it. Go, show, go the distance. Yeah. Show your wife great respect by putting your best foot forward and showing her how great you are buy her at a fantasy pizza. football <laughs> and then buy her a pizza. <laughs> All right, one last reminder to drop it like it's hot. Waiver wire is going through. See who the other league mates have sent into the waiver wire. Tomorrow starts the week matchup previews. We do have one slight update. Do we? Yeah, because I mean, we had talked about oh, it, yeah, uh, this Jimmy the... Garoppolo, but now it's being reported head coach Antonio Pierce of the Raiders, he's not decided who will start. Ooh. So this is this is upgraded from a mid-game move to maybe we just play Jimmy Garoppolo, There's which no would be way. fantastic. There's no way that this doesn't happen if I didn't listen to that song coming in. Uh, I, I've I got Devontae hey. Adams and I, Bolton. Uh, I was you just king. Say, I was just gonna say there. I, I could tell you, <laughs> there's no, there's no chance that Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't start. Jason. Everything has worked. Why, out for Jason? Andy. Jason? Because Andy has Devontae Adams. No, no, no. I know we've yeah. got Devontae Adams yeah. too. I'm just saying every single thing that needs to go right has fallen into place for Andy so far. And what if he, it's Brian Hoyer? Well, I, it's I mean, anything but O'Connell. <laughs> I, I think Brian Hoyer is a sideways move, but Garoppolo is an upgrade. That'll do it for today's episode. Starts tomorrow. Matchups the next two days. Fantasy faceoff and a whole lot more. We'll talk to you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.